What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another episode of my upgraded budget series here on my channel. And this is for Madden 25 Ultimate Team. I know we're starting to come toward the end here of Madden 25 Ultimate Team, but there are still some values to be had here, especially at the defensive tackle position. And that's the position that we're looking at today. And guys, if you're new to this channel, if you're new to the series, I want to welcome you, but I also want to make sure that you guys are aware that we've done a few other episodes of this series with linebackers and wide receivers and safeties, so I want you to go back and look at those as well because I think they might be helpful to your team. And what this series is actually based on is a previous series that I did that was just a pure budget squad, and what I tried to do in that series was kind of stay under like... 10,000 or so coins per card and uh, I think that we were able to do that very successfully on the previous series but what I wanted to do with this new series was actually kind of do an upgraded version of that because there's a lot of people out there that kind of took those teams and have been able to assemble more coins and uh, do a better job winning their head-to-head -head season games and things like that and now they're looking to make some upgrades to their team but maybe they still don't have a million coins so what this series is kind of intended to do is take those people and give them some ideas on what cards that they could use to upgrade their team based on a kind of a, a little bit more of a variety of a budget. So we still have the low budget cards, but we've also got some ones that are a little bit higher up so that you can kind of, uh, you know, make a, a more significant upgrade if you've got some more coins. So with that being said, let's get things started for this episode. And again, guys, we're talking about the defensive tackle position. So the first card that we're going to be taking a look at today is Mean Joe Green, and this is a, a base legend card. It's not actually a full ultimate legend or anything like that, but it's still a pretty nice card. It has some nice attributes. It's going for about 21,000 coins at the moment, and uh, you guys are going to notice at first glance that it actually has quite a bit of green in the attribute fields. Uh, and now if you guys are new to this series, let me quickly explain. Uh, green basically means that that attribute, in this case, uh, the first one, for example, speed. 75 speed is good for defensive tackles. Now, obviously, if we were talking about wide receivers or something, 75 would be atrocious, and that would be red. Uh, whereas yellow is kind of an average attribute, if that makes sense. So green means that he's among the best at the position. It's a very good attribute, uh, whereas yellow, average, and red, very poor. So you guys will see a couple of those that have uh, red later in today's video. However, today I want to focus starting off with Mean Joe Green. And I think that the first thing that we need to do is kind of go over the attributes that we're going to be talking about in this video. So what we actually have here, I, I put together nine attributes. And some of them are more important than others. But I think all of them kind of play a little bit of a role in being, you know, having some sort of importance to the card's overall value. So starting things off, we've got speed. We're also talking about strength, acceleration, tackle, hit power, block shed, power moves, finesse moves, and play recognition. And again, these aren't necessarily in any sort of order as far as importance goes. My opinion for defensive tackle is that the most important things that you want to look for are strength, and then number two, their ability to have block shed. And then number three, you either need to have a solid power move or a finesse move that's very good. Now, most of the defensive tackles rely a lot more on power move naturally because they're bigger guys and they're not going to be doing, you know, crazy turns and things like that to get to the quarterback. But the power move is something that is, uh, it's underrated, I think, in the game by a lot of people uh, because you primarily think of people that do power moves as being very slow. In a lot of cases, that is very true. 75 speed is not great uh, overall, but for defensive tackle, 75 speed is very, very good, especially if you consider the fact that he still has solid strength and a solid power move. Now, both of those attributes are right on the verge of being green. Uh, they're not quite to that green level. They're still kind of average for the most part, but they're not bad by any means. But what this card actually does is it has a very solid overall attribute in just about everything. Like I said, it's not red in any area at all. It has great play recognition. The block shed at 92 is very, very good. He has excellent hit power as well at 91. And uh, that's something that you're actually not going to find that often at defensive tackle. So 
So when guys try to run these power runs up the middle on you, Mean Joe Green is going to get into the backfield and he is going to smash that running back. And a lot of times he's actually going to force fumbles. So that's something that I think is kind of an underrated asset for defensive tackles. It's not really something that we think about them doing very often, but it's definitely something that this Mean Joe Green card has the ability to do. So that's one thing that I really enjoy about this card. It's something that I would definitely uh, recommend that people try out with Mean Joe Green if you guys haven't had an, a, a, a chance to use him at all yet. Uh, go out there and pick him up for 21,000 coins because he is a very good value at that 21,000 coin mark. Moving on now to our second card in today's video, and that's Madden 25 Vince Wilfork. Now, for those of you who have played a lot of Madden over the past few years, you kind of know probably what Vince Wilfork is. This is basically uh, the epitome of what his career has been in the NFL. He's not very quick. He has very slow speed at only 61. His acceleration is only an 80, so that's not very good either. His hit power being a 64 is a little bit of a disappointment, but he really, really does well in the attributes that are most important. And again, those are strength, block shed, and power move. Again, those three attributes alone can make a card extremely valuable at the defensive tackle position, and he is elite in all three of those categories. While he doesn't compete well against like your, you know, your ultimate legend D tackles and things like that, this is still an absolutely beastly card. Truly, it really is. 95 strength with 96 block shed and 94 power move. It really doesn't get a whole lot better than that. I, I wish that he did have a little bit more of like hit power uh, and that kind of thing, but overall, I don't really care that much about my defensive tackle hitting the player at, at the defensive line. It doesn't happen that often that he's gonna actually square up and smash somebody, so I'm not overly concerned about it. To me, what I really want to see is somebody that can get off the defensive line quickly and with that high block shed, that 96, he's going to be able to do that and he's going to be able to hit guys in the backfield. Unfortunately, he's not much of a pass rusher, but if you combine him with this next card that we're going to be taking a look at, you might actually have a pretty beastly duo. Again, Vince Wilfark, only 16,000 coins and I definitely think he's worth that price tag. Moving on now to our third card of the episode, and that is going to be defensive tackle for the Cincinnati Bengals, Geno Atkins. Now, just like any of the other budget cards that we're going to look at in any of the episodes, really, there are some areas where Geno Atkins is very good and some areas where he's not so good. Uh, starting off with the not so good, 74 hit power is not great. It's not absolutely horrible, but he's not really going to be, just like the Vince Wilfork card in the last slide, he's not going to force a ton of fumbles. But then again, like I've said time and time again, how many times does your defensive tackle really force fumbles? It's not very often that he's going to square up and hit the running back or the quarterback, so I'm not too worried about the lack of hit power. What I like to see out of Geno Atkins, though, is that he has 73 speed and 93 acceleration. That is excellent for a defensive tackle. It's not the best that you're going to find, but it's very, very good. It's way up there in, in the top echelon of defensive tackles, even including some of the really high end, the, the ultimate legend cards and, and things like that. So it's actually very, very quick off the line. It gets a lot of sacks for a defensive tackle. You're not going to find many defensive tackles that do better than this. And especially when you add in the fact that it has 97 power move, Oh my goodness, 97 power move is beastly. This card just destroys opposing D tackles with that uh, power move. Now the finesse move is only a 70, which doesn't really look very good at, on the surface, but it actually is good for the, the position. A again, keep in mind, though, of course, that defensive tackles are generally going to rely on that power move, so we don't really worry too much about finesse move, but it is worth noting that he does have a better finesse move than most of the other cards that you're going to find at the defensive tackle position. Now, where this card is not very good is that it, don't, it only has 90 block shed and 91 strength. And again, I like to kind of look at those two categories along with power move as being my most important attributes for defensive tackles. So I am a little bit disappointed in the fact that it only has 91 strength and 91 or 90 block shed. 
But at the same time, though, those aren't horrible attributes. It's still solid enough that he does a great job of getting to the opposing quarterback, like I said. So it's kind of all those things combined that make this a really good overall defensive tackle. And I really, really like this card. My personal opinion is that this is probably the best value of all of the defensive tackles that we're going to be taking a look at today. So if I were to make one recommendation for you, if you've got like 13,000 coins like this is going for, go out there and purchase this card because it's 95 overall. So it's not really going to lower your overall too much if you're worried about that. And if you're looking to save coins at the defensive tackle position, if you have a really expensive card currently playing defensive tackle, swap it out with this one and see if you just see if you notice any difference at all, because I don't think you're going to notice much at all. I think that Geno Atkins is going to do an excellent job for most people and you can take the coins that you save on a more expensive card and uh, apply it to a position that's more important because defensive tackle to be honest with you not overall that important to the grand scheme of things in Madden. So with that being said let's move on to our fourth and final card in today's episode and that's defensive tackle for the Baltimore Ravens Haloti Nada and Haloti Nada is one that I think a lot of people don't really realize how good this card is because it's only going for 7,500 coins. It's only 94 overall. It's a base elite card, but it does have some really, really nice attributes in those three major categories that we talked about. It's got great strength. It's got excellent block shedding. And then it's power move it's not as high as like the Geno Atkins that we just looked at or the previous few cards that we've looked at today, but at 88, it's still acceptable. And when you consider the fact that it's got such great strength and block shedding, it really kind of makes up for those things. So for 7,500 coins, this is actually like a legitimate budget card. It's not even really an upgraded budget card as far as the price goes, but it plays better than the 7,500 coin price tag. So it's definitely a nice one. And uh, if you're looking for a, a lower priced, but still really, really good defensive tackle, look no further because this card is really, really good. And I think you'll be very satisfied with it if you make the investment. So with that being said, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video in the upgraded budget series for defensive tackles. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. Don't forget to leave a comment as well. Let me know if there are other defensive tackles that you guys like that you've been using that are kind of moderately priced here, maybe under 25,000 coins. I want to hear your feedback. Let me know if what you guys think about the cards that we put into today's video as well, because your feedback is very, very appreciated. Thank you so much for everybody who's subscribed to my channel because of this series. If you are new to the channel, make sure you do press that subscribe button as well because we are going to be doing more videos on other positions. I've got the pink slip series coming up uh, later this week and I, I think that you guys will enjoy it. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.